Hello everyone, my name is Viktor Nilstroyev and today I'm going to conduct the webinar. I see that there is one more, it's Elia Burstein. Hi Elia, could you please write if you can hear me and uh, the camera is okay and the sound is good. By the way, if you also have any questions, just don't hesitate to ask them now. Maybe. Uh, maybe you can ask me uh, something about my previous webinars and the information I provided. So we are waiting for some other attendees and uh, I believe that we will start in five to six minutes. Uh, by the way, Elia, where are you from? Okay, there are only oh one more. There is one more person joined the webinar. Oh, I was born. Okay, it's great. So uh, while you were born in Moscow, uh, do you speak Russian? Oh, that's great. So. <laughs> And uh, do you hear a Russian accent when I'm talking uh, in English? <laughs> yes, I understand. Uh, so, uh, me too, every time. Yeah, 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 so <laughs> every, I, I think every Russian, even if he lives in America for 10 years, have an accent. And uh, yeah, it's really hard to get rid of it. Okay, so let's speak today about financial markets. By the way, the topic of this webinar, of today's webinar, is how to trade volatility in Forex. But before we start, I want to tell you some news which were released this week. Uh, for example, it was a huge withdrawal of crude oil inventories. It was more than, it was a replenishment of more than 5 million barrels, which is, it's much more than the forecast, and that's why uh, the price of crude oil increased. Or oh, what else? Uh, a few, a few minutes ago, there was Canadian GDP released and it was quite positive. It uh, came, uh, I mean GDP for June came in 0.3% which is uh, uh, higher than the forecast of 0.1%. So and of course uh, Canadian dollar increased against American. I'm speaking about uh, GDP for the second quarter of Canada, it came in four and a half percent. And uh, I can say that it's quite good because the focus was three, three and seven percent and the previous value was three and seven. Oh. Probably it means that uh, Canadian dollar will uh, increase against all other currencies, including American. But tomorrow we are waiting for non-farm payrolls to be released, and it's very important uh, news, re news release. And uh, the forecast is that, uh, the forecast is 180,000 of working places, and the previous value was 209,000. Mm, however, now I can't say and I can't forecast the, the price direction. But um, generally, I can say that uh, euro dollar is so high right now and um, uh, it should boom back. But 
I can't be sure about it. Uh, okay, we are waiting for more attendees. There is five five people in this uh, webinar. Oh, in my last webinar, it was about thirty or forty, but. Uh, Today, I believe everyone went to the beach. Okay, there is also Paywall and R Hira in the chat. So, guys, please tell me where I'm from and uh, just okay. Hira is from United Kingdom. That's great. By the way, I was in United Kingdom only once in 1996 when I was very young. Okay, and Paywall left uh, left the webinar. Maybe there was a problem with the sound and um, he will return. Okay, so we'll wait for one minute more and then start the webinar. By the way, tomorrow uh, the unemployment rate is going to be published, I mean unemployment rate in the United States, but I'm not sure that it uh, can affect the market because uh, the forecasts is just uh, the same as the previous value and uh, I believe that um, the actual value will be equal to to this data. Okay, payroll is here, so please payroll uh, just uh, uh, Type if you can hear me and please tell me where are you from. Yeah, people from Slovakia, I remember. Yeah, I've never been to Slovakia. Uh, Okay, by the way, Pavel, how do you like my webinars? Because I remember that you were on my previous webinar. Okay, anyway, I think that uh, it's time to start the webinar. Uh, Thank you. Uh, thank you, Payroll. Yes, I um, I was trying to do my best on the, my previous webinar about divergence. Okay, that's great. And once again, hello everyone. Thank you for joining this webinar. And my name is Viktor Nostroyev. I'm a private trader. And uh, just a few words about me. Uh, since 2003, I've been trading financial markets and I started with Forex, but then I broadened my horizons to commodity markets. And now I specialize on agricultural markets uh, because I consider them to be more transparent. Uh, but, but I also trade on Forex and I have a few strategies that work on Forex and I'm going to share, uh, I'm going to share them today. Okay, I'm going to turn off my camera. Okay, be sure to read the, disc the disclaimer. And uh, this webinar is recorded and uh, you can watch this webinar on forexboard.com uh, probably tomorrow. Today we will be talking about trading volatility in Forex. It's a very important topic 
especially for beginners. Trading volatility is very popular when we speak about options in futures trading. For example, when I trade options, I can just buy or sell volatility without taking any risk of the future price movement. If I sell volatility and then the volatility goes down, I earn and I don't care where the market price is. Some similar strategies can be also applied to Forex market. And this is what I'm going to tell you in this webinar. Moreover, Forex gives us so many opportunities to make money looking at volatility that you can't just ignore this very important market parameter. Okay, I just want to remind you that the topic of the webinar is how to trade volatility in Forex. And this is our webinar plan. So, what volatility is, types of volatility, how to measure volatility, strategies to trade volatility, and uh, there are three strategies listed. And then you can ask me if questions if you have any. Uh, moreover, if you have any questions right now, just don't hesitate there, uh, to ask me. I will, uh, I will pause and answer them, of course. Okay, let's start with volatility. Volatility is a statistical term referring to price fluctuations relative to the average price over a specified period of time. Uh, let me just show you what volatility is. In this chart you can see the price of euro against American dollar on the H1 time frame and the red line is a moving average. It shows the average price of this asset. And these arrows shows us how the current price deviates from the average price. This is one of the ways to measure the volatility. Just calculate how many pips it is far from the average price. Volatility is used in two main ways. Low volatility means that there is a little or no change in value over a specific period of time. And high volatility means that values have varied significantly over a specific period of time. And medium volatility is sometimes used to refer to a state between low volatility and high volatility. There are two types of volatility, historical and expected. Historical volatility equals to the standard deviation of asset values within the specified time frame calculated from the historical prices. And expected volatility, which is also called implied volatility, is calculated from the current prices on the assumptions that market price of an asset reflects expected risks. It's, uh, it's a market estimate of the future volatility. And it depends on historical volatility and market expectations of any news releases or mar just market conditions. We can't measure it. Of course, there are some forecasts, but I don't think we can rely on it because I think we can't take into account all the risk and all the expectations of all market participants. Volatility is something that we can use when looking for good breakout trade opportunities. Uh, as, I, as I said, volatility measures the overall price fluctuations over a certain period of time and this information can be used to detect potential breakouts. And for forex traders, 
it is regarded as one of the most important informational indicators um, for their decision on opening or closure of currency positions. It could be appraised through financial indicators like moving averages, Bollinger Bands, Commodity Channel Index, Average True Range and some others. Let me show you. Moving averages are probably the most common indicator used by forex traders and although it is a simple tool, it provides invaluable data. Uh, for example, if you apply the 20 period simple moving average to a daily chart, it would show you the average movement for the past 20 days. But I suggest you put two moving averages on the chart. These are two exponential moving averages with the periods 5 and 21. Blue one is 5 and red one is 21. And look into the difference between uh, their values, like here and here. We can estimate whether the market is volatile or not. For example, here, when uh, the difference is small, the market is less volatile. And this is period of high volatility. This is the simplest way to measure volatility and I'm gonna meet you with other more complicated ways. And the second one is Bollinger Bands. Bollinger Bands are excellent tools for measuring volatility because that is exactly what it was designed to do. Bollinger Bands are basically two lines that are plotted two standard deviations above and below a moving average for an X amount of time where X is whatever you want. So if we set it at 20 we would have a 20 period simple moving average and two other lines like you may see it in on this chart one line, I mean, the, the upper line uh, would be plotted plus two standard deviations above and the other line, this one, would be plotted minus two standard deviations below. Okay, and when the bands contract, it tells us that volatility is low. For example, you see here, the bands contract and we can say, we can definitely say that volatility is low. And when the bands widen, like it was here, it tells us that volatility is high. I hope you know how to use Bollinger Bands to estimate if volatility is high or low. Okay, the next indicator is Commodity Channel Index. Uh, this indicator measures the deviation of the commodity price from its average statistical price. High values of the index point out that the price is unusually high being compared to the average one. And low values shows, show that the price is too low. Usually, this indicator is used as an indicator of overbuying or overselling. Uh, CCI usually varies in the range of plus or minus, uh, plus and minus 100, and values above plus 100 inform about overbuying state, like it was here. And the values below 100 inform about the overselling state like it was here. 
But uh, we can also use this indicator as volatility indicator. For example, when CCI is inside the range of plus and minus 100, the market is calm. And we can call it a period of low volatility. And when its value is above or plus 100 or below minus 100, then we can say that the market is highly volatile. And uh, the next indicator on the list is the average true range and it's also known as ATR. Uh, the ATR is an excellent tool for measuring volatility because it tells us the average trading range of the market for X amount of time and uh, X is a period. You can just set it as you want like 14 or 20 or 21. that this true range indicator is the greatest of the following. Current high less the current low uh, and the absolute value of the current high less the previous close and the absolute value of the current low less the previous close. So uh, these indicators show, uh, show us the greatest of any of these three. So if you say if you set ATR to 14 on the daily chart, it would show you the average trading range for the past 14 days. Like you can see on this chart, it's uh, American dollar against Canadian and it's daily chart. And uh, here you can see uh, average. average trading range for the past 14 days. This is the period of low volatility when this indicator is too low and this is the period of high volatility. We can say that uh, ATR is higher than its average amount and this is the period of medium volatility, just an average level of this indicator. Uh, what else we can say? When ATR is falling, it is an indication that volatility is decreasing. And when ATR is rising, it is an indication that volatility has been on the rise. Another way to measure volatility is to use standard deviation indicator. Uh, you may know that uh, standard deviation measures the amount of variability or dispersion around an average. In financial markets, the dispersion is the difference between the actual value and the average value of an asset. Uh, but as for me, I prefer to use average true range than standard deviation. If you look at this chart, you will notice that they almost are the same. And all of these indicators are integrated into a popular trading platform, including MetaTrader 4. Uh, and the next indicator I'm going to tell you about is relative volatility index. And this indicator reflects the direction in which price volatility changes. REI's main characteristic is that it confirms forex oscillator signals like uh, RSI, MACD, stochastic and others without duplicating them. Uh, by the way, relative volatility index is not integrated into MetaTrader 4 but uh, I can provide you with this indicator. Uh, if you want, you can just find it uh, in the internet. 
it's a very popular indicator, but I don't know why MetaQuotes uh, did not um, integrate it into MetaTrader 4. Okay, what else? Uh, when traders say that the market is highly volatile, this means that currency quotations change drastically during a trading session. The high volatility of the market stands for higher risk for investors, but generate more opportunities for high profits. Many beginners tried to enter highly volatile markets looking for bigger profits and uh, of course quickly suffer serious losses. So if you're a beginner, it's better to start and test your trading strategy on the calm market. When uh, weekly spot rate fluctuations do not exceed 2 to 3 percent from previous week closing price. So volatility is different on different market segments and it may increase significantly fast. Um, if you have any questions regarding the indicators that can measure the volatility, don't hesitate to ask right now. Or you can ask to me also by the end of the webinar. And now I'm going to tell you about trading strategies that can help you, that, ca that can um, help you to trade and uh, probably can make you money uh, if you will successfully if you if you successfully use market volatility and the first strategy I'm going to tell you is is called fill the gap so I'm gonna tell you how to trade the gap and first I want to show you this chart uh, just let me explain you what uh, the gap is. So every Friday afternoon at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, the Forex market closes for the weekend, you know. However, the lack of movement on your trading screen is an illusion. The market is still moving. Prices continue to revalue themselves based on what is happening around the world even when markets are closed you just don't see that movement until Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time and this results in the market gap and one very simple way to trade volatility would be to look for these gaps that occur over the weekend and attempt to trade them just like any strategy to trade, it doesn't work every time. So be sure to place your stops and targets at reasonable levels. According to my statistics, uh, gap the, the gap is usually filled in uh, in 60% of the cases so um, probably I mean gap is likely to be filled but of course it happens not every time okay so just uh, let me just give you an example. Uh, for instance, let's assume that uh, China released some data over the weekend while uh, the markets were closed. And this uh, data sh uh, shows something about their economy. The typical reaction to this type of news would be the price movement. And since the markets are closed though, you don't see that movement until Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time when the Forex market opens for business for the week. And here, for example, you can see what is called a market gap. 
it is a region on your chart where a candle jumps from one price to a completely unrelated price with nothing on in between. Then, as you can see, the market sometimes comes back uh, to the price that it closed uh, to the price that it closed at on Friday. This is called a closing or filling the gap. Like you may see on this chart, the gap was filled. And for example, if you open a trade here, just long position to fill uh, the gap, you could uh, earn uh, 17 pips in just a few hours. Uh, it's not much, but uh, a gap is likely to be filled. So let's check the basic rules for this strategy. First, check the, the price at uh, Friday 5 p.m., then check the price at Sunday 5 p.m. If there is a gap, open the trade in the direction to fill the gap. Like in our case, we should open a long trade. So we buy on this level. Then set Friday's closing price as a take profit. So it should be take profit. And you see that this uh, price was reached successfully in a few hours. Uh, if the gap wasn't filled, you should close the trade at the same day. Uh, at the same day. But um, if you are a beginner, I kindly recommend you to use stop losses. Just set it in a reasonable level, you believe. Maybe you can find any support or resistance levels there. So you can set it there. Okay, there is a one more example. It's uh, it's a gap on uh, British pound against Japanese yen, and again. So you see the gap was filled, but it took more than eight hours to fill the gap. The gap. But at the same time, you may notice that the difference was about uh, seventy pips. which is a good amount to earn. So if you open a long position here, then this position will be in profit any every time. Just close it when it reaches uh, the Friday Friday's price. Um, it was closed at so pro approximately here. Okay, and now let's let's look at the chart to see if there are other gaps examples. Here is another example, and I I recommend you to use Japanese yen uh, against American dollar or against other currencies, especially British pound against Japanese yen. So. It happened on the 2nd of June, and once again, the gap was filled, but uh, yeah, it took about five, uh, five hours to fill the gap. Not much, I think it's okay. There is one more gap here. So this is oh, this is the closing price, and then the market opened here. So it's approximately uh, 35 pips, and just in uh, 30 minutes the gap was filled. So uh, once again this strategy worked. Uh, 
uh, still no gaps. Okay, there is one. Again, and uh, on British pound against Japanese yen. Uh, so again, it was a gap and it was filled. But in nine hours, Okay, and here you can find another gap. Uh, so the market opened higher, but then started to decrease. Uh, then it was an upside, mo upside movement for a moment. And only here, in 5 hours and 15 minutes, the price reached uh, the Friday's price. So again, the gap was filled. And uh, what is this? It is also called a gap, but uh, it happened during the session. So it was caused by um, news releases. So I don't recommend you to trade uh, such a gap. Uh, just trade gaps on weekends. Okay, so uh, that's enough examples, and just remember that gap is likely to be filled. Okay, and there is one more uh, there are two more trading strategy I'm going to explain you uh, in this webinar, and one of them is called ATR breakout. So now this strategy can be used on Euro USD M30 time frame, but um, generally speaking, it can be used on any currency pair, but uh, I kindly recommend you use Euro USD M30. And uh, for this strategy, you need uh, uh, to use two indicators. The first one is ATR with MA, uh, uh, with moving average, with a uh, nine period. And the next one is Bollinger Bands trigger. What is Bollinger Bands trigger? This indicator is not integrated into MetaTrader 4, but it is based on Bollinger Bands and it shows, uh, it shows us the moment when Bollinger Bands starts to widen. I, I can also provide you with this indicator if you think that um, it really works. Okay. Let me show you the the example. Uh, the idea is to take a trade when the market prepares to accelerate. And ATR will help us to anticipate and prepare for that exact moment where the market is about to accelerate. While we will focus on preparing a breakout range to catch the move. Uh, let me tell you the rules of this strategy. Uh, this is the level of 13 pips and when ATR is higher than, uh, is above than uh, 13 level and is higher than uh, moving average with 9 period, the market is active. That's where we want to be trading. And when ATR is below 13 and uh, or uh, it is below MA, we don't trade. And this indicator is Bollinger Bands trigger. 
So to open a long trade, we should be sure that ATR is higher than 15. It is. And it's higher than moving average. And Bollinger Band's trigger crosses up. So the yellow line is higher than red. And it means that we should initiate a long trade. So we open a trade here using the open price. And we close this position when ATR crosses its moving average. So here, like it is shown uh, um, on the screen. I can't say that the strategy can earn you much, but uh, it can be, it is likely to be profitable. And uh, another example of a short trade, again, so when ATR is above 13 level and moving average, uh, and it's also higher than moving average, the market uh, is active and we are going to trade. But if we are going to initiate a short trade, then uh, Bollinger Bands trigger should be uh, should should cross down and it crosses. So we initiate a short trade on the next candle, like here. And again, we close it when uh, ATR crosses the its moving average. So here, and the, once again, I can't say that we earned many pips, just approximately about uh, 15. Oh, there is a question. Okay, um, uh, it's a good question. So, um, yes, to white Bollinger Bands, we use standard deviation indicator. So, why do we need a different indicator? Um, so, uh, w what can I say? It's just. Uh, Uh, it helps us to notice uh, the moment when uh, uh, when uh, bands are widen. So these two lines helps us just to notice it because if we use just standard deviation, we won't notice it. We or we should apply any levels to standard deviation indicators. Uh, moreover, I um, speaking about me, I don't like it. But um, okay, well, what can I say? This uh, this strategy is used inside one of my uh, expert advisors, and uh, um, I can say that. Uh, uh, sometimes you have to optimize the level of 13 um, on ATR chart. So uh, this parameter should be optimized. For example, for current market, 13 works, but um, it is likely to be changed in future. It depends on the, uh, on the market conditions. And at the same time, I can say that you should also uh, optimize stop losses and take profits. Uh, these parameters also vary and um, uh, for example uh, according to my experience stop loss uh, varies from 30 to 50 
and um, uh, t take profit approximately from from 20 to 50 depends on the market condition and um, to apply this strategy successfully you should always optimize these parameters because it can work now but it uh, it can not work in a uh, in a few months later and yes you every time you need to optimize parameters and it's um, it's highly recommended to use expert advisors for these purposes okay Ah, by the way, just uh, let me show you one thing. Uh, for example, you want to use average true range. Where is it? Average true range. So you apply this uh, indicator and then you want to uh, apply a moving average not to the price but to the indicator then you just simply plug uh, simply drop it and just choose apply to previous indicators data and now you see that the moving average was applied to the indicator not to the chart if you didn't know such a feature then now you can use it Okay, let's continue. Uh, the next strategy I'm going to tell you is Bollinger Bands breakout trading strategy. Uh, we should use it on M30 time frame on any currency, but uh, I recommend major currency pairs. And for this strategy, we use in such indicators as Bollinger Bands and ADX14. So, what is ADX? Uh, uh, let me show you the chart. Here it is, this indicator, the blue line. Um, it's, it is called Average Directional Movement Index and ADX is used to quantify trend strength. ADX calculations are based on a moving average of price range expansion over a given period of time. The default settings is 14 bars but although other time periods can be used and you may see that there are two more lines uh, one of them is plus di and another is minus di uh, when when the plus di is above the minus di prices are moving up and adx measures the strength of the uptrend and for example here here when uh, minus di here minus di is above the plus di prices are moving down but uh, generally they are uh, the market is flat here let me find another oh for example here uh, yes minus di is higher than plus di and the prices are going are moving down and in this case, ADX measures the strength of the downtrend. Okay, so let, let's continue with the strategy. Uh, 
uh, when um, when you see that the Bollinger Bands form the horizontal channel, like here, and it is confirmed by ADX, uh, which is below 27 level, you should set pending orders 15 above, like like the here, and, and uh, 15 below the Bollinger Bands. Uh, I mean, uh, this middle band. So 15, uh, 15 pips above the middle band and 15, uh, 15 pips below the middle band. And uh, so just wait um, for the price to turn the price of, um, uh, of, your, of your orders. Uh, for example, here it was uh, a long trade opened and you should set your stop loss on the middle on the middle band. So here. So when uh, when the um, uh, when the order was executed, you should st uh, put your stop here on the middle band. And speaking about this strategy, I I can't say that I find uh, that I found the best way to set take profit. That's why I suggest closing the trade using trailing stops. For example, if you use trailing stop for this strategy, you should close this position here with a huge profit. It's uh, up to uh, 85 pips, uh, not uh, approximately 80, 80 pips. Let me show you an example of the short trade. Once again, uh, ADX is below 27, and there is a horizontal channel. So here we decided to send two pending orders, uh, one 15 pips below and another 15 pips above uh, uh, the above the middle band and uh, sell stop was executed here then we should uh, place a stop loss on the middle band here so the stop loss didn't work and then we use trailing stop and we close the position here As, and it was uh, 68 pips of profit in this case. Um, what can I say? Uh, this strategy is still raw. I'm working on it. Um, so it might work, but um, I think that um, you know, I should improve the way to exit the market. I still can't find the best the best way to to exit the market. Uh, maybe uh, we should use just fixed parameters, uh, fixed stop loss, and take profit. And if you if you want to uh, call an expert advisor, then just uh, also optimize the parameter uh, of this shift. So, uh, what is the distance between the middle band and sell stop and buy stop. Uh, let me again repeat the rules. So when the Bollinger Bands form the horizontal channel, which is confirmed by ADX, uh, which is less than 27, you should set painting orders 15 pips above or below the Bollinger Bands. Uh, you should set stop loss if if one of the orders was executed. You should set stop loss on the middle band. 
and to close the trade use trailing stop. But if um, if ADX uh, became if ADX becomes higher than 27, just delete all pending orders. Okay, if you have any questions, just don't hesitate to ask me right now. Um, what I'm going, I'm also. Wait a second. Uh, I will also provide you with templates for these strategies ATR, breakout, and um, Bollinger Bands breakout, for, so you can apply it on your chart and just uh, uh, try to find the signals. If you really want to um, um, to use this strategy, but uh, according to my experience, filling the gap is uh, the most reliable strategy uh, trading volatility. But um, um, you should just remember that you should um, try, uh, you should trade only weekends gaps, not any gaps, only during weekends. And uh, it works better on um, uh, currency pairs in, with Japanese yen, like, Euro, um, like, like American dollar against Japanese yen and um, other yen cross courses. Uh, so, if you have any questions, just don't hesitate to ask me. Uh, moreover, I'm going to launch a poll right now. So, how satisfied are you from this webinar when one is bad and five is excellent? I will launch this poll for one minute. Please vote. Uh, uh, on the last webinar, uh, uh, as you know, maybe I'm also an educator on Udemy and I have a lot of courses there and uh, last webinar, uh, some of you were asking me if there are some trading courses. Uh, yes, I also publish trading courses there and uh, you can find me on Udemy. Just type in my name in the search field. So I don't want to give any links here. Just uh, if you want to find my courses, my uh, videos, just uh, type my name in the search field on Udemy. Uh, if speaking about this webinar, this webinar will be uh, uploaded to forexboat.com uh, probably tomorrow. The webinar was recorded. Everything should be fine. Okay, I um, I close the poll. So, uh, this is all I wanted to tell you and to show you on this webinar. And uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask them now. I'll wait for a few minutes if you have some questions. Uh, by the way, if you have your own trading strategies, um, how to trade volatility, you can also share them on uh, Forex Boat, um, a private trading group with Damian. He will he will share it with me. Okay, I'll wait for one minute more and if there is no questions, I will uh, close the webinar. Anyway, guys, thank you for coming.
uh, by the way, let's check how, uh, um, uh, let's check Canadian dollar chart and um, this is the result of a positive statistics uh, release. So uh, the GDP was success, uh, was above expectations. Okay, yes, thank you, Elia. Okay, thank you guys for coming. I'm finishing the webinar.